Today on Newswatch, market meltdown. China's stock market crash is having a global impact. Hear what's ahead and why investors say they're bracing themselves for a volatile week. Plus, more to come. The group releasing the undercover Planned Parenthood videos say they still have plenty to show. See what's in the latest video. And fueling the hatred, a new book claims the conflict between Israel and Palestinians is being provoked from the groups outside of the Middle East. We'll hear from the author. Thanks so much for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Investors are bracing for what could be another wild ride on Wall Street today. Chinese stocks plunge yet again, but there are signs of hope that other global stock markets may be bouncing back. Aldea Heard is on this story. Wall Street has been looking for a rebound and European averages shot back up as the trading day began. But China's Shanghai Composite was down another 7.5%. And China today again cut interest rates for the fifth time just since November in its latest attempt to boost its slowing economy. That weakening Chinese economy has been one of the key reasons why the U.S. market has fallen so sharply the last few days and led to such a wild ride, with the Dow moving down, then up, a thousand points during the day Monday. And traders say expect more of the same in the days ahead. It's going to be a volatile week. It's going to be a lot up and down. What the global stock markets are doing and have been doing for this past month is repricing a growth in China that is less than it had been. The Dow is now down 11 percent from the start of the year, and the bloodbath on the Chinese stock exchange has some worried that a U.S. stock slide is overdue. The market has gotten ahead of where the actual economy is. The White House was trying to quell the panic Monday by preaching what it calls the long-term strength of the U.S. economy. What I would encourage people to evaluate is the ongoing strength and resilience of the U.S. economy. Uh, U.S. businesses over the last 65 consecutive months have added 13 million jobs. That's the longest sustained private sector job growth streak in American history. Experts say that over the last week, the average American's 401k lost $9,000. But over five years, that same account is up about 60 percent. And many analysts say that even though more volatility is ahead, they expect that over the longer term, patient investors will still come out ahead. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Suspected Islamic militants attacked Christians in the West African nation of Burkina Faso. The armed men wounded at least two people. An eyewitness says the masked gunman took over a police station, telling him they're with Boko Haram. They told him, quote, we are looking for Christians and you are spared because you are a Muslim. The incident happened near the border with Mali. It is not known if the Islamic militants have a direct connection to the Nigeria-based Boko Haram. Israel was ready to launch an attack on Iran's nuclear program until two key cabinet ministers decided against it. The revelation that Israel was prepared to launch an attack on Iran came from a former defense minister, and, and it aired on Israel, Israeli TV. The stunning report has shaken up the political scene at a time when it's dealing with President Obama's nuclear agreement with Iran. Chris Mitchell brings us that story now from Jerusalem. According to revelations by Ehud Barak, he and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu were prepared to attack Iran three times between 2010 and 2012 when he served as defense minister. The revelations came when Israel's Channel 2 played audio recordings. In those recordings, Barak says that in 2010, he thought they had approval from government ministers for a strike on Iran. But he says two cabinet ministers, current Defense Minister Moshe Ayalon and current National Infrastructure Yuval Steinis backed down from the plan. Steinis and Ya'alon questioned Barack's view of events and why the military censor allowed the recording to be played that revealed one of the country's deepest secrets. Many analysts wonder if there's some political motivation behind Barack's revelations. The recording came from interviews Barack conducted for a book about himself called My Life's Wars and was supposed to be off the record. The revelations come at a sensitive time when many wonder if Israel is still poised to attack Iran after the recent nuclear agreement. In the meantime, as members of Congress prepare to vote on the Iranian nuclear deal, the AP released the text of the secret agreement between Iran and the IAEA. It says Iran itself will provide photos, videos and environmental samples to the IAEA from the Parchin military site. 
Parchin is the site where many believe Iran is developing a trigger for an atomic bomb. Iranian leaders and their proxies also continued their war of words against Israel. Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah said, We believe with certainty that Israel, this cancerous tumor, is headed for extinction and that Palestine and Jerusalem will be returned to their people. And a media outlet associated with Iran's Revolutionary Guard released a video on YouTube showing an Iranian invasion of Jerusalem. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. The Kentucky Department of Juvenile Justice has barred an ordained minister from helping young people because of his biblical views on sexuality. Evangelist David Wells would not promise to refrain from ever telling juvenile inmates homosexuality was sinful. So Wells has been barred from visiting, counseling, or leading worship services. The president of the America Pastors Network says Kentucky's rule is a game changer for the gospel. Sam Rohrer says when pastors and all Christians whose calling is to preach and share the good news of Jesus Christ are forced by the government agents to renounce sharing the very reality of sin, they are in fact being prohibited from sharing the healing and life-changing potential of redemption. Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz is recruiting pastors to mobilize their congregations in a push to defund Planned Parenthood. Cruz sent an email to 100,000 evangelical pastors citing Planned Parenthood's barbaric practices of harvesting the body parts of innocent babies. Cruz is asking pastors to preach against abortion this Sunday, and he's calling for a day of prayer and fasting September 9th. The group releasing those startling videos of the trafficking of baby body parts has a constitutional right to release their undercover videos. A Los Angeles Superior Court judge made that ruling Friday. Immediately afterwards, the Center for Medical Progress released another video. This one is a trailer of videos to come. The latest video released by the Center for Medical Progress shows the CEO of STEM Express laughing about how her lab technicians were shocked when they received fully intact aborted babies from Planned Parenthood. Tell the lab it's coming. Yeah. Sit all open the box. Oh, God. <laughs> STEM Express is the company that purchased aborted babies from Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood's Deborah Nicotola talked about the demand for fetal organs. Yesterday was the first time she said people wanted longer. And then she felt like I could always as many intact livers as possible. Also in the new video, Planned Parenthood's Melissa Farrell talked about the business of providing intact baby cadavers for the harvesting of internal organs. So if we alter our process mm -hmm. and we are able to obtain intact fetal cadavers, it's all just a matter of line items. Mm -hmm. And CMP suggests those line items apparently mean greater profit for Planned Parenthood. We agreed that a hundred dollars would keep keep you happy. I want to live with you. <laughs> <laughs> I said I want to live with you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The buying and selling of human fetal tissue is a violation of federal law. While Los Angeles Superior Court Judge Joanne O'Donnell has now allowed the public release of the undercover videos, a STEM Express violation of privacy lawsuit against CMP will move forward. Gary Lane, CBN News. A picture of Jesus has been removed from a Kansas middle school where it had hung for decades. The Chanute School District Attorney advised the superintendent that Royster Middle School could not legally display the print of Warner Solomon's famous painting, Head of Christ. The Wichita Eagle reports the issue arose after the district received a complaint from the Wisconsin-based Freedom From Religion Foundation. Many Chanute residents are unhappy. One former student saying not enough people have Christ in their lives. All eyes are on Vice President Joe Biden and possible new moves in the race for the White House. This comes after a secret meeting with Senator Elizabeth Warren over the weekend and then a private lunch with President Obama. Political observers say Biden entering the race against former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton would put the president in a tough spot when it comes to an endorsement. But some Republicans say Clinton's campaign is now vulnerable and that might be affecting Biden's decision. I think he sees uh, vulnerability in uh, Secretary Clinton. She's got an, uh, more than an email problem. This is a pretty much self-inflicted wound. When the trust numbers go this low, you're exposed as a politician. So I don't know what Joe's going to do, but if he's ever wanted to run, now's his best chance. 
Clinton is now said to be cutting her Hamptons vacation short to head back on the campaign trail later this week. America is getting some international help to fight the wildfires raging in several western states. 70 firefighters from Australia and New Zealand arrived in the U.S. to fill a shortage of mid-level fire managers. They will bolster some 32,000 firefighters already in the field. The surprise for all of us is, is the, the size and the scale of things and just the amount of resource that's committed to these fires. Um, all the resources in New Zealand uh, wouldn't, wouldn't staff a very small fire here. It's a big fire, it's a lot of area, we don't have a lot of resources with all the fires going on, so we're, we're covering a lot of ground with pretty few folks. This is one of the worst fire seasons on record there. So far, more than 11,000 square miles have burned. Still to come here on Newswatch, a new force is accelerating the hatred Palestinians have for Jews. See how an author goes undercover to expose this menacing threat. So why does it seem like there can never be peace between Israel and the Palestinians? A new book blames some of the trouble on people outside of the Middle East, fueling the hatred between the two. Our John Wagi brings us this look at the frightening influence of these European and American groups. Anti-Semitism is alive and well in Europe, with attacks in France and Austria doubling since 2013. This year has been marked by attacks at a kosher supermarket in Paris and shootings of Jews in Copenhagen. The new book, Catch the Jew, has been a number one bestseller in Israel. It claims Europeans are fanning the flames of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict by exporting that anti-Semitism to the Middle East. There is not only Jews and Arabs here, the way I thought fighting it out. There is another tribe here, and the tribe is called the Europeans. Some Americans, but mostly Europeans. Author Tuvia Tenenbaum says European governments back organizations that claim to help Palestinians, but their true goal is to create friction and chaos. In reality, they have come to this land to implant and instill hatred in the heart of every Muslim against the Jews and also sponsor self-hating Jews to catch the Jew doing something wrong, to declare the Jew evil and to end the story of the Jews being here. Behind me is an Israeli checkpoint. It marks the crossing between Israeli and Palestinian areas, and European groups send monitors here. They're hoping to catch Israeli soldiers doing something Europeans don't like. For six months, Tenenbaum and his wife Miriam interviewed hundreds of Israeli Jews and Arabs, Palestinians and foreign aid workers, asking about their jobs and beliefs. Paid by a German newspaper, Tenenbaum posed as a German and hid his Jewish identity. In the eyes of Palestinians and internationals alike, being German, they thought, made him a kindred spirit in the hatred of the Jews. This is Bedouin land. We shall not be moved. He captured many examples on video, like this Palestinian, Atef, a top researcher for the pro-Palestinian Israeli human rights group, Betzalem. The group documents alleged Israeli brutality against Palestinians. Atef says the Holocaust never happened. Uh, because we're Germans, we support the Jews. But ask him if he remembers that we also killed them. <laughs> it's a lie. Yeah? You don't believe it? Tenenbaum challenged Betzalem. I want you to retract the reports that he's signed on. How can you believe a guy, how can you trust a guy whose research has found that there was no Holocaust? Another example involves Casa per la Pace Milano, House for Peace, a group backed by the European Commission. It brings young Italians here for what it calls peace education to see firsthand the situation in Israel and Palestinian areas. Yet some of that education comes from tour guide Itamar Shapira, who describes himself as an ex-Jew and speaks against Israel. During a tour at the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial, he compares Israelis to Nazis. And this one uh, is a very known uh, massacre that happened here in 1984, that is called Bir Yassin. Uh, it used to be a Palestinian village below these houses and, and 
and trees, a Palestinian village of a few thousand people, and about 170, 120, 400, again, a fight of the numbers um, of Palestinians were killed over there. The museum fired Shapira as a guide, but he continues to conduct private tours. Tenenbaum's German connection also gave him access to Palestinian leaders like former security chief Jabril Raju, considered a Palestinian moderate. He told Tenenbaum that even Hitler didn't know how bad the Jews are. Yeah, my question to you was, do you think the Israelis have changed? Excuse me, let them not to change. Let them not to change. Israel will be isolated. Israel will be more than South Africa. Hanan Ashrawi is a Christian Palestinian, yet she wouldn't talk about the existence of a Jewish temple here. Her former boss, Yasser Arafat, said the Jews never lived here. Of course, no, the Jewish tribes were here, but they weren't, you know, a state the way they claim it to be. Or Children of state. And I don't was believe, there a, 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 I believe there was, was there a, a, a temple there to be a Samaria or whatever. I have no idea. I'm not an archaeologist. Tenenbaum doesn't blame the Arabs. He lays the guilt squarely on the Europeans who pay them. Tenenbaum, whose grandfather was murdered by the Nazis, has this message for the Jews. I don't want you to die. I don't want you to disappear. Fight back and be brave about it. John Wagi, CBN News, at the Adarot checkpoint near Jerusalem. Up next, we're at the premiere of War Room to bring you the men and women behind it. Find out how the new film is a call to actions for Christians everywhere. In just three, di three days, the film War Room makes its debut in theaters nationwide. Our Charlene Aaron caught up with the cast just before the movie premiere in Dallas. Take a look. The Kendrick brothers are behind such hits as Courageous and Fireproof, and their latest project, War Room, is set to hit theaters later this month. Now, some say this is their best movie yet. We recently caught up with the cast and crew at the red carpet premiere in Dallas. War Room is a call back to prayer to fight the right enemy with the right resources the right way. And, uh, and I learned a lot making this film. The Lord stretched me. We hope that when people see this film, they leave the theater thinking, I'm going to go home. I'm praying right now. I'm making a prayer strategy for my family, my marriage, my children, my church, and this culture. And they get on their knees and they fight. You're just one-on-one -on -one with one person when you're acting. You're trying to ignore the fact that the camera is there. And so it is completely different than standing on a stage and teaching, um, you know, a Bible study. And I loved the difference. I loved the creativity and the excitement of doing something outside of my box. They were two weeks out from filming this movie, baby. Couldn't find the right fit. They had uh, interviewed and auditioned people with really, really, really big names, but they didn't get the okay from God. And then somebody said, you need to send them a picture. I sent them a picture. They didn't respond because I was too young. He said, they're going to be in town, get dressed up and go. I did. And you went dressed as an elderly woman. Yes, I did. I even went home and I started my own like prayer wall because it taught me how impactful prayer can be. Thank you. Wow. What are some of the things you're praying for? I pray for my classmates and my family and like others around me. Because if it wasn't for the part that I'm playing, I guess we wouldn't be here. Let's be real. I mean, there would <laughs> be nobody here. The clarity that I have as a result of this film and even studying around the film is that God really wants us to pray. Like he really, I mean, that's how he comes down and does what he does. There are some funny scenes in there. I have a, you know, the, uh, the plate switch scene with Priscilla when I'm thinking that she's like poisoning my food. And so there's some, yeah, there's, so there's some like moments. Michael Jr. All, I always brings the funny. Uh, but yeah, we had a lot of fun. Beth Moore is hilarious. Beth shows up on the first day of set and she says, all right, I will not ruin this movie. She said, in Jesus' name, just keep working with me. We're going to get it. We're going to get it right. We're going to make it work. She was a joy to work with and did a great job in the film. So now it's Beth Moore, author, teacher, actress. Yeah, listen, listen you want to really save your, save your judgment on that till after you see it. I'm not sure you if family? you would call it acting, but it was a blast. It was a blast. I wouldn't take anything for it. The premiere is just about to start, and the theater is absolutely packed. And remember, you can check it out, too, nationwide, August 28th. 
I've had the privilege of seeing that film twice already. It does debut on Friday. I can tell you that Karen Abercrombie steals the film. You'll want to go see it. Stay with us. We're coming right back. It takes just 15 minutes of brisk walking or cycling or swimming to help older adults live even longer. People older than 60 can cut their risk of dying by a little more than 20% from even a small amount of exercise, according to a study in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. Reuters reports the lead author of the study says scientific evidence is starting to show that replacing sitting around with even some light physical activity can bring health benefits. And he says age is no excuse not to exercise. Well, it is now time for your Tuesday Tweetable. We hope you will post, tag, tweet, and share this message with others. This is a great day to give. Make someone smile and pay someone a kind word. You'll be amazed at just how much giving gives back to you. And it comes the very moment you share that kindness. In fact, in times of your greatest need lies the perfect moment to give to someone else. I dare you to try it and share with us. Well, that's going to do it for CBN News Watch. You can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. We'd love to hear what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can do it on Facebook or at CBN News on Twitter. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. Make this a terrific Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.